I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. What if I told you there was an easy way to use up your scraps? Or while you're sewing the seams on your current project, you can be sewing the blocks on your next one with almost no extra effort. It sounds kind of magical, doesn't it? This quilting tutorial is all about bonus blocks and why you should be making them. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. One of the frustrating moments in quilting is when you first start to stitch. If your thread is too loose, it can make a nest. If it's too short, the needle might need to be rethreaded. Or sometimes it gets all caught and choose up your fabric. When I first started quilting, I was told to use a pair of scrap crumbs to catch the threads and prevent those issues. These are often called leaders or headers, but it wasn't long before I thought I could make a better use of this step. A bonus block is a more intentional way of using leaders. That is, instead of using two crumbs to be sewn together that will eventually get tossed, you use scrap pieces that can be sewn together to make a useful block. Let me use this example. This is block number five from my video, Scrap Sampler Blocks. It has five pieces and four seams, and it's made from two and a half inch strips. So whenever you need a leader in your project, you sew one seam, and eventually, it becomes a block. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you have seen me make these blocks. While I was assembling my quilt top for my 100 Days 100 Blocks quilt, I made all these bonus blocks. And that was only just making the top. You can choose any block layout that you like, but keep it simple you want to be able to sew straight seams from one edge of the block to the other. So avoid anything with a partial or Y seam. And keep it to a block that you like to make and that you can easily cut your scraps to fit. I have made several videos on easy blocks, which might be a good place to start. By far, my favorite is this one. But it's best that you have several different styles to choose from because your mood changes, your scrap pile changes, so you'll want to have options. When you decide on what block you want to use, make stacks from your scraps with all your block pieces ready to go. and keep them near your sewing machine so that you can grab them as you need them. If you are interested on how I process my scraps, please leave a comment below. Obviously, you sew bonus blocks at the beginning of a seam, but there are other opportunities too. One of the games that quilters like to play while they're making blocks is don't break the thread. That is, instead of cutting your thread at the end of a seam, you chain piece and leave something under your needle at all times. But there'll be moments when you get stuck and that is a perfect place to use a bonus block. Here I am making the cheetah block from the trending quilt. There are plenty of pieces in this block and lots of sub block units. So this is a perfect place to use bonus blocks. I can save myself a trip to the iron by working the block units in series. And at the end, not only do I have a great block, I have also all these extra bonus blocks. You could also use them to mark in between chains. I don't know about you, but when I am transferring things from my design wall to my sewing machine, I can mix them up so easily. Using a bonus block to mark the end of a row or the end of a column means you can easily identify the sections and keep them separate.
we've already talked about making bonus blocks without using much additional effort. And we've also talked about how they can help control your threads and how you can use up your scraps with them. There are even more benefits to making a bonus block. When you first start your seam, because the squares are bigger than scrap crumbs, they give your brain a chance to tune in to what you're doing. And they can remind you to adjust your stitch length, sit up straight, adjust your seat, or turn on a light. Maybe change your needle or change your thread. Because you have a stack ready beside your sewing machine, they are easy to grab so you can test out your quarter inch seam and adjust it so it's perfect every time. And sometimes it takes a couple of tries to get it right. And because they're made out of scraps, they're not precious. So you can use them to practice your basic skills, sewing straight and good ironing technique. Because there's no stakes involved, you can test out different color combinations, playing outside your comfort zone, and experimenting with value and contrast. And sometimes your brain is just tired and they are a simple way to relax. Before I get to the next question, let me tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone that wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests like pattern design, lettering, and writing. Personally, I have used Skillshare for several years when I've had to level up my skills in photography, film editing, and graphic design. This month, I've had to learn about sound editing, and I took Audio Editing 101 with Yasir Smith. It is a complex subject, and I was so happy at how easy he broke it down. With my iPad right here, they are easily consumed while I sew, enjoy my lunch, or I'm waiting for appointments. New premium classes are launched every week, so there's always something new to discover. The first 1,000 people who click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare. Bonus blocks are supposed to be easy, so don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to turn them into something right away. Let them grow organically over time and see what happens. And when you need blocks for filling in your back, just grab them from the pile. You can turn to them when you need a block for a project, like a bag, something fun, maybe a quick baby quilt, or donate some to a community initiative. You'll also find that since they come from your scrap pile, there'll be a flavor that can appear. Me, with my love of warm colors, I see that I could have enough of these blocks to make a nice scrappy quilt. No, you do not need to pull fabrics from Mount Scrapmore to make these blocks. You might be a new quilter and you haven't gathered enough blocks yet, or you just don't like sewing scrappy. You can cut strips from yardage or fat quarters to make your fabric stacks. Last year, I turned some batik fat quarters into two and a half inch strips, and I used my jelly roll block number six to day by day and block by block accumulate so that eventually I had enough blocks to make a whole quilt. You can also sneak in other blocks to use as bonus blocks. As I am sewing together the leftovers from last year's 100 Days 100 Blocks Quilt Along, I am using the blocks for this year's Quilt Along as bonus blocks. Don't forget to consider paper piece blocks when you're looking for bonus blocks. But not all paper pieces will work. What you're looking for are pattern pieces that the seam starts on one edge and continues right to the other. Ones like the economy block will not work because they are partial seams. Now, I am not the first quilter 
to make bonus blocks out of leaders and enders. I can think of Bonnie Hunter or Cheryl Arkinson, just to name two off the top of my head. So there are a lot of great patterns and ideas out there to choose from. If you want to see other ways to use up your scraps, I will leave a link to my scrappy playlist right here. If you want to learn how to practice the basics, straight sewing, accurate cutting, and a good arting technique, I'll also leave a link to that playlist. Take care and I'll see you next time.